for joining me on a quilting tale today. My name is Shaylin and today I want to talk to you about four free quilt alongs that I'm working on right now. One of them is a charity quilt along so they do ask for a donation but these are all available online. The patterns are free to download online and even if you know, they've been going on for a couple months it, you can still jump in at any time so, and do them at your own pace. So I want to just dive right in and show you the four that I'm working on. Plus there's another, it's not a quilt along, but it's another free one that I want to also share at the end. So I do have a little calendar here that I'll zoom in on in a moment. It helps me keep track of the quilt along. Some of them a new block is posted weekly, some are monthly, and then some have bonus blocks that are every few weeks. So this calendar helps me keep track of what to look for that week. So the first one that I started is the 2022 Riley Blake Design Block Challenge. This one started January 4th and a weekly block is posted. It will end in mid-May, uh, May 17th. So there will be 16 blocks total for this one. Every Tuesday a new block is released except the last Tuesday of the month. So you usually get um, about three blocks a month with this one. So for this quilt I wanted to use corals and aquas as my fabric, so I just pulled from my stash whatever coral and aqua fabric I have. This is what I have left after doing the blocks I've done so far. We're more than halfway through it. Um, so I just pulled those two colors and then I just started pulling secondary colors that were in these fabrics. So there were reds and navies and kind of that bright green. Um, and so I pulled more of those that I have ready to go here every time it's time to pull fabric for a new block. I have some loose red here too because I'm using that in um, another one of these quilt alongs. So let me go ahead and show you the blocks so far. We'll come in close for those. Block number one. Block number two. Block number three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This next one is called the Heartfelt Quilt Along. It's put on by Fat Quarter Shop, and this is the charity quilt along I was talking about. Uh, they ask for a donation for these patterns and um, it benefits the Make-A-Wish Foundation in the Texas area where Fat Quarter Shop is located. And so for this one, um, it started February 4th and the first Friday of every month they release a pattern for a new block. This one will run through September. Um, and what's nice about this one is they give you a little diagram where you can kind of lay out your colors and the blocks and get a preview of what the blocks are going to look like. So I've been kind of marking off and color coding them for the blocks I'm using. For this one, I'm using um, a fat quarter bundle and it's called Flower Sugar Rose Kiss by Lotion. And um, again, this is just what I have left after doing several blocks, but you'll see it up close when I show the blocks. I'm also using some of the floral, uh, beautiful day fabric as the background fabric, which I've really loved in this one. One thing I've noticed with the blocks so far with um, this quilt along is the large hearts that it makes. And when it uses the stitch and flip or the sew and flip method, there's the potential for a lot of waste on that, and so I've been sewing an extra quarter inch away from my seam when I do the sew and flip method, um, and then you know cutting a quarter inch away from that so I can get extra blocks. So I call these the bonus blocks, and I've just been keeping them in this little bag here. So some of them are about two and a half inches, some of them are 
larger and you could leave them as half square triangles or I've been sewing some of them into um, hourglass blocks and so I'm not sure what I'll do with these yet. I might try and make a pieced backing. I don't think I'm going to do the backing that comes with this with the kit that they're going to be showing later but I think I'll do some kind of pieced backing with these so just got to see what I have at the end um, and I'm also I'll do a demonstration really quick to show you how I square up my hourglass blocks so let me show you the blocks it's made first and then I'll do that demonstration as I mentioned with the heartfelt quilt along there are five of each block. So this is the beloved block. I'll show you all five of them with that flower sugar rose kiss fabric. And this one is called Buttercup. It's a scrappy heart. I just love the bright colors in this fabric and the little roses and dots together. And the last one that I have to show you is the Darling Block. It's another scrappy looking heart. All of them are heart themed. So these are bright fabrics but just softer like lavenders and pinks and uh, light blues. And last one. I mentioned I would do a demonstration for how to trim down an hourglass block. So these are just two half square triangles that so um, in the opposite direction and so once they're pressed open they look like this they still have the dog ears on them and they're not completely squared up so to decide what size to trim them down to if you know this wasn't in a pattern it didn't tell me um, what I do is I just take my ruler and make sure that the ones um, are in the upper right corner and then I just kind of line it up to the edge and I can see that it extends just past five inches. So I'm going to make this a five inch block. You want to make sure that you have enough to trim off and um, you don't want it to be, you know, more than five and a quarter here. Otherwise you might not have enough on all sides to trim. So since I'm going to be doing a five inch block and that's a nice size to work with, I know that half of five is two and a half. So I'm going to find two and a half and I do have my safety on there, um, two and a half on each side and find that intersection point. And I will line it up where the four triangles intersect um, in the block here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more there. And so once that intersection point is matched up with the two and a half inch mark, I'm going to just align this diagonal line on the diagonal of the block. And I will make my first cuts here. Let me zoom back out. Try not to get in the camera too much, trying to trim around it. All right. And so once you've done that, the second trim is easier because all you have to do is spin it 180 degrees. And I just like to remember that the white parts are on top because um, sometimes you can forget if there's no dog ears to remind you of which corner to do. But just line the two and a half inch mark up again on the intersection point. And this time it should be lined up on five inches on both sides. So that's how you know you've got it all centered. Um, so you want it lined up on the edges and then the diagonal should also line up. And again, the two and a half inch mark should be in the center. And just trim like so. And you have a squared five inch hourglass block that has the same amount of fabric on each side. So I'm just going to add that to my collection of 
bonus blocks that I've been making. You can see there's a few different styles in here, um, depending on what I've cut off from those scrappy looks. There's a bunch of different blocks in here. So I look forward to just putting these all together and seeing what I can come up with for the backing with all of these. The fabric was just too pretty to let go to waste. So hopefully that'll help you if you have any extra fabric left over from making any of these quilt along blocks. Next up is a quilt along from A Quilting Life and it's a block of the month mystery quilt along. So the first Thursday of every month the next block is released and this one started in January. It goes through December so you'll have 12 blocks at the end. This one I started a little late. I started it in March because I just stumbled upon it and decided I liked how the first couple blocks looked that I saw and um, decided I will do this one as well. So for this one I'm using Poppy Cotton's Daisy May Fat Quarter Bundle here um, which I had left over from doing another little project and I decided I'm going to go with a bolder background so I'm using a kind of a goldish yellow background for this one. One of the nice things about this is it uses a churn dash border around each block and so you can get those pieces all cut up ahead of time so I have my sides and the little corner pieces here all ready to go so that saves time as I put each block together to have those ready. Um, let me go ahead and show you the blocks up close now. This one is January. February. March. And April. I like how they all have this churn dash border around them to keep them uniform. The final quilt along is Moda Blockheads 4, and this one has the most blocks. It started about a month ago, and it releases a new block every Wednesday, so there's a weekly block for 28 blocks total, but then it also has 8 bonus blocks that will release every 3 weeks or so, um, is my understanding. So I notice on their blog when they put an update about when the next bonus block is coming out and I just mark it on a sticky note and put it on this calendar since it doesn't have actual dates on it and I decided for this quilt along to do crayon box colors. The fabrics I'm using in this quilt top are inspired by a little baggie of fabrics that I got at my local quilting guilds fabric sale they were having so there were just these bright cheerful floral colored prints that I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with them but I just knew I really liked them and I thought I would tie them into this quilt and just pull fabric based on those so they're kind of reminding me of crayon box colors just the really basic crayons and so I pulled my bright yellows and greens and reds blacks um, and then I also have some orange, navy, and blue. The one color I didn't have a lot of was purple. I just have a little, so I'm still debating if I want to put purple in there. But I have all my bright colors pulled, and I'll show you the blocks I've made so far. This one might be one of my favorite combinations of colors so far, just because of how vibrant it is. One thing I did do... Um, because this is my first time doing a Moda Blockheads quilt along and it's their fourth one. I learned about it after Moda Blockheads 3 ended last year and I saw on their website that you could download the block patterns from Moda Blockheads 3 um, before they were all taken down and so I went through and there were a lot of them and so I just downloaded the blocks that I was most interested in and I printed them out here, the ones that I liked the best. Now there are different sizes. Current Moda Blockheads 4 um, makes 9 inch blocks and I believe 4.5 inch. I'm doing the 9 inch size. And last year they had multiple sizes but not 9 inches. So 
Um, I'm going to take the 12 inch patterns and maybe do some fancy quilt math to shrink them down to 9 inches if there is a block that I'm not interested in doing in Moda Blockheads 4. And I know there are some applique ones coming in that I'm not sure I'll want to do, or if there's just one that isn't really my style, um, I might substitute it out with one of these from Moda Blockheads 3 because um, there were some really great ones last year that I wanted a chance to do as well. So I might incorporate those. Another thing I like about uh, this quilt along is they give you some basics, and so there's tips in here that you can use for um, cutting flying geese. There was a new method I, I had seen but I hadn't tried before, the no waste method, and it also talks about why stitching with a scant quarter inch is helpful, which again is something I hadn't really considered before, and so I've been trying it uh, with the scant quarter inch and it's been working out well. So there was just a lot of good learning in this one that I appreciated. So I'll go ahead and show you the four blocks and the bonus block that I've made so far. And these are the nine inch blocks, starting with block one. Two. Three. And the first bonus block. All right, last one. I mentioned that I had one more that wasn't an actual quilt along, but it is a free pattern on Fat Quarter Shop's website, which again, I'll link below. And this is called Brick House. It's the 2022 Scrappy Quilt. And it's just one block that you make multiples of. This one has 16 of these little brick houses that you make with your scraps. And that appealed to me because I'm accumulating lots of scraps as I make more quilts. And I thought this would be a great one to make a record quilt with. So um, I saw Kimberly Jolly of Fat Quarter Shop talking about um, making a house for each quilt that she was doing this year. And so I like that idea. I'm gonna just do recent ones, not just this year, because I don't make nearly as many. Um, but I do have lots of scraps left over and so I've made two so far and I like this one because with all the quilt alongs I have going on plus some other patterns that I'm working on um, and designing myself I don't want to feel overwhelmed fortunately I've been on spring break this last week um, and I've been able to catch up with all of these quilt alongs so this one I can just do as I finish a quilt or as I have time to pull scraps from past quilts that I've made. But they look like this. So this one is from the Bloomington fabric line and it was the 2020 designer mystery quilt along that I did through Fat Quarter Shop. So really beautiful springy colors in this one. And then I also recently finished that quilt using the boudoir fabric line from Basic Gray, and so I made another house, and it has a very different look uh, with those neutral colors. And so I'm really excited to put together, I have lots of scraps from past quilts, and these ones come together really easily. There are hardly any seams to line up. Um, I'd say it's very beginner friendly. There's just a little stitch and flip for the roof portion that you need to do, but um, like I said, not many seams to line up. So um, these stitch together very quickly, which I appreciate. Um, sometimes it's nice to get that instant gratification when you see how the block is turning out um, and you can start seeing it come together. On a side note, if you do the scrappy brick house blocks, when you do the roof, you'll have excess fabric left over when you do the stitch and flip method. So I've been doing the same thing where I've just been holding on to and trimming down my half square triangles, making two and a half inch half square triangles. So I'm just going to hold on to them because I might decide to use them in a border or for the backing when the whole thing is done. So that's Brick House. Here's how I'm keeping track of all my quilt alongs. I printed out a non-dated calendar page and I've just color-coded um, and abbreviated Riley Blake Designs 
comes out every Tuesday, but I left the bottom one empty, so I just remember that the end of the month, they don't have one for that Tuesday, the last Tuesday of the month. Moto Blockheads 4 is every Wednesday, and you can also see I put the end dates and how many blocks it should make. So 16 blocks total for Riley Blake Design, 28 for uh, Moda Blockheads 4. The A Quilting Life Mystery Block of the Month has 12 total. It ends in December. And then the Heartfelt Quilt Along is five different blocks. And you make five of each block. Um, and it comes out the first Friday of every month and runs through September. I also put Moda Blockheads 4 every few Fridays they'll have a bonus block. So I have my little sticky note from the last one they had on Friday, April 8th, and there'll be eight of those total. So on the bottom, I just have my color coding here um, and the dates that it runs and how many blocks it makes. So that's just to help me stay organized. So I just keep this on my little pattern stand so I can see it up close and remember if a block is coming out that week to be watching for it to download. You can also follow these different quilt alongs on Instagram or subscribe to their newsletters and you'll get reminder emails as well. I thought I'd also share how I keep my projects organized with so many going on. So I got these great shopping bags um, when I went to the International Quilt Festival last year and um, they hold a lot of fabric and have these great pockets in here. So I have the Riley Blake design fabric here and I just tie up my fabric in these bundles using some selvage scraps here and then I keep all the finished blocks and information that goes with the quilt along is paper clipped in the pockets and then over here I have the heartfelt quilt along fabric and I keep all my bonus blocks that I make in there I have the second bag um, that again has my fabric bundled together for Moda blockheads. I have my background fabric in with it. Um, just larger cuts of fabric that I have. And then this is the um, churn dash corners and the background fabric I have for the A Quilting Life sew along. And then again in the pockets I have the patterns here that are printed out. So I just keep everything together that way. And I just keep my poppy cotton uh, fat quarter bundle folded up and on display here with the others because it looks pretty. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you can see my progress as I make these blocks. I post pictures of the latest ones that I finish so you can see them come together. The quilting life goes till the end of the year, so maybe I'll do one of these videos when I'm finished with all of them just to show you how they turned out but like I said follow my progress on Instagram or Facebook if you're on there and I hope you're inspired to try some of these it's great that they're all available for free so check the links below to see where you can access them thank you for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time mm -hmm.